Hello. Uh, presented by Dr. Mohan Ramchandani from India. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the speaker. Dr. Mohan Ramchandani is currently the Director of Interventional Endoscopy at AIG Hospitals, Hyderabad, and adjunct faculty at Manipal Academy of Higher Education. He is an alumni of the prestigious Banaras Hindu University, and he has trained in the field of therapeutic endoscopy in India and abroad. He has a long experience of over 20 years in the field of gastroenterology and has undergone advanced therapeutic endoscopy training from centers like Northern Yokohama Hospital, Japan, and Zongshan Hospital, Pudan University in Shanghai. Dr. Ram Chandani is an expert in advanced procedures like third space endoscopy, spyglass cholangioscopy, ERCP, EUS, and enteroscopy. His special interest is third space endoscopy, and he is recognized as an international expert in this field. He is invited world over, including many times to Sri Lanka, as an expert faculty member for live endoscopy workshop. He conducts regular workshops at the Asian Institute of Gastroenterology, and many doctors have had the pleasure to train under him. He, is a, he has a passion for teaching postgraduates and is a keen researcher as well. He has many publications in national and international journals and has authored many chapters in gastroenterology textbooks. He is on the editorial board of Video GIE and is a peer reviewer in many GI endoscopy journals. He is active in GI endoscopy societies and is presently the treasurer of the Society of GI Endoscopy of India and a member of the American Society of GI Endoscopy. Without further ado, let me hand you over to Dr. Ramchandan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sanjeeva, for your uh, kind introduction. And uh, uh, it's a great pleasure and a great honor for me to be invited by Sri Lankan Society of Gastroenterology to be able to deliver a lecture uh, in front of this august uh, audience. Uh, but I've been asked to uh, conduct a, a webinar on therapeutic ERCP and uh, its trips and uh, some of the tricks I will be just sharing what I have gathered in my experience. Uh, so uh, this will be like my overview uh, of uh, the lecture. Uh, I'll be covering about the selective cannulation, which is the, the most uh, uh, the technique which uh, everyone of, should, uh, of us should master. Not only the biliary, but also pancreatic cannulation we'll be talking about. And of course, uh, we will not be uh, facing day-to-day uh, -day in clinical practice uh, the easy cases, but also we should know how to do uh, or get uh, through the difficult cannulation. And of course, pre-cut is a very important armamentorium for the selective cannulation, which we we'll, should talk about. And minor papilla uh, also poses a different challenge uh, for an ERCP uh, endoscopist. And uh, the hyalur structure also uh, are important to master because they are associated with uh, ductal separation. And we should understand uh, what are the tricks to uh, minimize the cholangitis and also to maximize the biliary drainage. Altered surgical anatomy uh, also poses a different issue, which I'll be talking about, and also the complications and how to tackle those. So in next one hour, we'll be touching upon these topics. And I hope by the end of this lecture, uh, um, many of us, including our postgraduate students and young colleagues uh, will be able to uh, start or do the ERCP in much uh, better way uh, as compared to uh, before this. So let us talk about uh, the selective biliary or pancreatic cannulation. And this is the ultimate endpoint of ERCP. Unless you achieve a cannulation 
you will not be able to do uh, even a, a stone extraction. So, uh, good thing about thing is that most of the community endoscopists are able to do a ninety percent cannulation rate. But our aim should be at least ninety-five to ninety-nine percent, which is quite possible, especially in uh, a unit where uh, day in day out ERCP is done. So it's about the volume also where you will achieve more success. But let us talk about the basic technique, which is very very important to achieve this cannulation rate. And the basic technique starts with seeing or understanding the papilla. We should not rush the things. And we know that papilla has many structure, the frenulum, the orifice, the infundibulum. This is the bulging portion of bile duct, which is visualized in the duodenum. So based on these appearance, there are many types of papilla. This is the normal papilla where there is uh, no other uh, protrusion apart from the papilla itself. But if the papilla is smaller or just at the same size of the sphincterotome, which is two millimeter, this becomes a very small papilla. Now, small papilla is the most difficult cannulation to do cannulation and associated with most pancreatitis. So if you are a beginner or if you are a fellow, better not to start with this type of um, papilla. Uh, if you see this type of papilla, which is type 3 papilla, where there is a large infundibulum, these papilla are easy to cannulate, but also easy for pre-cut sphincterotomy. And type 4 papilla is also, uh, they are easy to cannulate. So a type 2 cannulation is the most difficult as has been shown in this study. But majority of the papilla are the type 1 type, which are easy uh, for cannulation. And the smaller papilla, which is difficult for cannulation are, are rare. But if we are working in a unit where more experienced endoscopists and less experienced endoscopists are there. These papilla, the small papilla, should be tackled first by the more senior endoscopist. Uh, so uh, this is important to understand that papilla also uh, changes. It will not come directly on your face. It may come at different positions. It can come at laterally or it can come uh, on center or three o'clock or nine o'clock position. But ultimately, you have to change the position of your scope and the patient position to bring the papilla in a correct position. So know the papilla, look before anything carefully Position, position, position is the mantra of success. As I told, consider the size, morphology, and orientation. Biliary orifice and intramural segment, how the intramural segment of bile duct, which looks like infundibulum of papilla, travels through. And be very gentle. And these are the position which some people will uh, before you start the the first touch to the papilla switch on the fluoroscopy and see how is your position if your position is straight like this that is good that is the best position but if you are in a long loop or if you are having a hockey stick appearance these are the position where you may not succeed and why it is important to achieve the straight position because here the scope is the most stable and maneuverability is possible you can have many maneuvers uh, possible once you are uh, in a straight position now how to bring this this straight position so you have to shorten the scope 
you have to shorten the scope to 70 to 80 centimeter from the in shorten it bring the ampulla at 12 o'clock position don't start cannulating if the ampulla is at nine o'clock or three o'clock or in the center bring it up to 12 o'clock position right like this and big wheel should be down if your big wheel is down or big wheel is up you will change the distance from the papilla if your big wheel is away you are very far away from the papilla but you should be around one centimeter away from the papilla it should be like big wheel should be down both locks should be there that also depends on personal preference uh, you can give buscopan to reduce the peristalsis and i'll talk about once this position has been achieved that is straight position 70 to 80 centimeter from the incisors papilla at 10 o'clock position this is the time we should start mini maneuvers what are those mini maneuvers now there are 12 maneuvers you can do now if you see that's a scope you can bring out or push the scope that is the first maneuver you can torque the scope if you torque the scope you change the position of the of the accessory approaching the papilla you can have up and down movement by big knob if up movement is there you will uh, go to the papilla away will be like away from the papilla so if you want to kiss the papilla you have to bring the big wheel down right up till there so that is one position then there is a small knob which will turn the papilla to the right or left then there is a sphincterotome now sphincterotome can be bended again so that brings another moment and then there is a elevator so elevator can also all in all these micro maneuvers are 12 in number so once you have done a macro maneuver that is to bring the scope in the straight position bring the papilla at 12 o'clock start these micro maneuvers now these cannot be taught as you practice you are you will develop a muscle memory or a spinal memory where you will automatically uh, do the uh, those micro maneuvers including the movement of body that is torquing the scope pull and push the big big wheel up and down the small wheel then elevator will be there and then your assistant will help you in bending the sphincterotome or changing the position of sphincterotome so these maneuvers are very important to start the cannulation now as i told bring the papilla right about 12 o'clock and if, if you are planning to do biliary sphincterotomy uh, try to go into 11 to 12 o'clock position while if you want to do the pancreatic cannulation go towards one to two o'clock position we'll talk about this more so this is the position which i told about and understand that the anatomy of papilla the bile duct is towards the mucosa you can see it is touching the roof while the pancreatic duct is not touching the roof it is in the bottom so if this is the lumen your papilla your bile duct is tangential just touching the roof and go going toward liver while pancreatic duct is piercing the muscularis mucosa muc propria per almost perpendicularly so that also needs to be taken in uh, consideration so this is the face of papilla where you want to go to 11 o'clock position for bile duct one to two o'clock position for the pancreatic duct the second is you want to go tangentially onto the roof onto the onto the roof of the papilla going up while your approach should be perpendicular hit not only 11 o'clock but perpendicular if you want to enter into the pancreatic duct 
so this three dimensional understanding of papilla is very important how will you do that you have first knowledge about that then you have so many uh, accessories available there are the sphincterotome now no more cannula we almost have got uh, you know done away with using the cannula because the sphincterotome serves two purposes most of the ercps almost 99% are therapeutic ercps so most of them will require a cutting so use a accessory which has therapeutic capability that will cut the papilla it allows it uh, it act as a cannula too act to pass guide wire and contrast the second important uh, advantage is it allows to change the direction you can bend the sphincterotome and change the direction of the wire then you have these wires the bending wires the uh, angled tip wire now these wires also can change the direction there is a straight wire so the wire can be short wire hydrophilic wires these are important and help us in cannulation why they are important because you can have a proper orientation of those bile duct where you want to do go perpendicular upwards first touch is at 11 o'clock position pancreatic duct first touch at 2 o'clock position and you need you can see here the sphincterotome is not bent if it is not bent that means it is going perpendicularly inside and more often than not you will go into the pancreatic duct because the orientation of pancreatic duct is perpendicular to the duodenal wall while if you want to go into the pancreatic duct you bend this sphincterotome your guide wire will be guided to the parallel to the gut wall almost parallel to the gut wall so parallel to the gut wall you have to bend the sphincterotome you have to go down you have to approach the papilla from below upwards if you approach the papilla from below upwards and your sphincterotome is bent you most often than not will go into the bile duct while if you approach from the level of the pancreatic uh, from the level of the papilla and your sphincterotome is not bent you will go into the pancreatic duct so these small maneuvers needs to be seen the second thing is if you really want to see the the uh, anatomy of bile duct you have to understand three things one is the bile duct starts in a s shape so there is a upgoing segment then there is a horizontal segment and then there is a vertical segment this is when you see almost microscopically and your guide wire should also pass like this that means first the sphincterotome is bent so that you go into the vertical segment and once you cross this vertical segment you tend to unflex the sphincterotome sorry so this is important animation to understand the first approach is with the flex sphincterotome to allow the guide wire to cross this vertical segment then you unflex and make this horizontal so that it crosses the horizontal segment and then you maneuver the scope by pushing it down or up to allow this to pass upside so this is uh, the movement if you can follow this you will be able to achieve so we'll see in the real time now you approach the papilla at 11 o'clock flex the sphincterotome so that you touch the roof you cross the vertical segment then you unflex or make it horizontal so that you cross the horizontal and then maneuver the scope by upside or pushing it down then you you will catch the papilla so this is how you do the 
sphincterotome flexed, vertical segment passed. Then there is unflexing to allow to the horizontal loop, and then this up up down movement or pull up the scope to pass the wire deep into the bile duct. So if you follow this rule, you will be able to succeed. And to help in this, these soft small wires means shorter length wires. Why these are important? Because they are easy to torque. If you use long wires, they are not easy to torque. Torquing is very important. Why it is important? As you can see here, you want you are repeatedly going into pancreatic duct. You torque. This is the torquing instrument. Sometimes you can use the finger also. These wires are short, one-to-one -one torquing. This is the therapeutic channel, proximal end of the scope. This is the distal end of the scope. You can see how you can torque. They, they are very, very important maneuvers. And you can see here also. You are using short wires and you are torquing. And uh, again, here you can see the wire is going into one duct. Suppose this is the pancreatic duct you don't want, you come back, torque, torque and try to go into the another duct. You duct see, again, that is going into the pancreatic duct. You torque this and then it will guide to the proper duct. So if you use these hydrophilic short wires, we use Terimo wire. These wires are good for selective cannulation, but these are short, so you cannot exchange the accessory on that. Once you achieve deep cannulation, you can exchange with longer stiff wires. Longer stiff wires are also available. And why the quality of wire is important can be seen in this video also. That how the flexibility of wire helps. You can see if there is a tight strictures or there is a narrowing over there. The wire goes into that stricture tip of the wire goes into that uh, shelf of that stricture. But if you keep on pushing, it takes a U shape and go in deep into the wire. And if your wire have good flexible uh, uh, tips, they are very important. So some of the wires, like this is one is the Wilson Cook and another was Terimo wire. They are very, very now, once uh, always understand that you should start with either guide wire, but I will talk about this. This is the one way of uh, doing cannulation. Take out the wire, uh, a small tip around two millimeters, and then go at 11 o'clock position right behind the first fold of the papilla and follow that maneuver which I told. Flex the sphincterotome and then like flex the sphincterotome and then subsequently you may have to relax it and then go deep into the bile duct. But only problem is uh, whenever you want to uh, go into the bile duct, the wire will go into the pancreatic duct. That is the rule and, if you, and vice versa also. So the best thing is if your wire is repeatedly going into the pancreatic duct, you block it by keeping that wire there. And then taking a guide from that wire, that the wire, say it is in at the, uh, the, the wire is going perpendicular inside, you have to come on 12 o'clock and slightly onto the left of this wire, because this wire is showing us where is the pancreatic duct. The pancreatic duct is here. So we have to go slightly up and left of this wire up and left of this wire and then go bend the sphincterotome this is different trajectory you can see pd is going like this and then once you bend the sphincterotome you will go into the bile duct so this is known as double wire technique so if you have a repeated insertion of wire into the pancreatic duct, don't remove the wire. Use it. Use it as a guide for CBD and also 
keep the pancreatic duct blocked but only thing which you have to do is once you have done your procedure you put a stent on this never leave, pull out the wire because you have done a successful removal of the cvd stone don't pull out the wire just like that put a stent that will be like good post ercp pancreatitis prevention otherwise the patient may have more pancreatitis because you have put the wire you have manipulated the pancreatic duct they may cause the problem now uh, when to use contrast whether to use guide wire or combination uh, both have got their pros and cons if you inject too much uh, that is not allowed now in fact the advantage was that if you inject you have direct anatomical road map but now we will have a road map with mrcp uh, the wire are supposed to cause dissection or perforation but uh, 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 with the contrast there will not be such but that is not correct majority of the studies have shown that wire guided cannulation is better it eliminates the risk of repeated pd injection may improve cannulation success and less traumatic but it is uh, the literature has suggest that most of the literature the guide wire cannulation is better but in practice uh, we should judicially use the contrast to delineate the lower bile duct or pancreatic duct anatomy so limited contrast followed by in wire is much better than either wire alone or contrast alone so do not inject too much that it opacifies the intrahepatic biliary system but inject such little contrast that it gives an anatomy of lower bile duct and if you have the lower anatomy bile duct like in this like a s shaped bile duct you see that so you have to maneuver it like this and then turn the wire and turn the wire but if you do not have the knowledge of this lower bile duct anatomy it is going to be extremely difficult for you to cannulate so the dictum is small amount of contrast followed by wire is the best way of cannulation so avoid submucosal in, in injection because sometime if your technician is in hurry before you place your pep, uh, sphincterotome into the proper orifice it may inject into the submucosa and cause too much of tissue injection and further cannulation may not be possible define the anatomy with early injection as i told early injection but define the lower cbd anatomy so in combination with wire technique especially using triple lumen sphincterotome is the best way to achieve cannulation now if you keep on doing the cannulation every time you may not succeed and more you attempt more you will bring the risk of pancreatitis especially if your number of cannulation attempts crosses 7 to 8 moment you cross that much you will cause severe pancreatitis so that is why important to understand that after 5 or 6 attempts of cannulation or 5 minutes of attempt take a deep breath think about different cannulation instrument like ultra tapered sphincterotome small caliber sphincterotome change the patient's position or use advanced cannulation technique like pancreatic guide wire assisted technique pre cut technique you may stop the procedure for some time because there is lot of edema by now or you can ask you can come back on the next day or if you feel that this is beyond your uh, capabilities you may refer this patient for a tertiary hospital don't overdo the things because these patient may have life risk because of over attempt and that is post ercp pancreatitis and in this patience is must 
patient you must have and this type of approach should be followed to minimize the risk to the patient but as i told as soon as you do five or six attempts and you are not able to cannulate think something else and the most important one is i think pre cut sphincterotomy this is underutilized by many of us this is an easy technique to master and also if adopted early in the algorithm it may reduce risk of pancreatitis as it just in contrary to what has been taught that sphincterotomy especially pre cut sphincterotomy is associated with more pancreatitis that is because we have done too much of attempts to cannulate in conventional way we overdid it and now we are doing pre cut sphincterotomy it is not the pre cut sphincterotomy which is causing the pancreatitis it is because we overdid so break the circuit early after 5 to 6 attempts think about pre cut sphincterotomy now pre cut can be done in many ways there are pre cut sphincterotomy which is done from the papillary orifice towards the infundibulum that is known as pre cut papillotomy or you can cut the bulging portion of the bile duct into the duodenum that is known as pre cut fistulotomy or if you have a wire into the pancreatic duct and you have passed the sphincterotome into the pancreatic duct you can change the direction of the cut towards bile duct by the sphincterotome so let us see how it is done majority of the time you will have a guide wire into the pancreatic duct because you have you might have cannulated pancreatic duct many times so don't lose the access use this uh, pancreatic duct uh, wire for stent placement but you can use before that a double wire technique try to go left and above this wire bend the sphincterotome try your best and do not overdo know your limitation okay it is not going change now change with the pancreatic duct stenting prophylactic pd stent five french stent uh, not long five french 5 cm but look at the uh, video which is which i i wanted to show where is my tip of the duct tip where did i leave the tip of my stent see that i am deliberately putting it uh, 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 deep into the d3 i'm deliberately putting into deep into d3 that will allow this infundibulum to become more prominent and the tip of the stent will not interfere in your cutting so now it is important to start from the orifice make a rough estimate where is the bile duct so i will aim from here to 11 o'clock position so this will be layer number 1 so layer number 1 is being cut that is the mucosa is being cut deeper structures are being exposed so and then try to avert the lips by pushing the uh, needle knife and wash then again you have to cut deeper deeper and you should know where to cut so this is the bulge of the bile duct and this is the third layer being cut in fact this is the bile duct which has opened up because this is right at the 11 o'clock so you have to as i shown you layer by layer cutting uh, exposing and then do not push the wire blindly if you push the wire blindly there will be lot of ooze and then whole of the plane will be distorted or you will not be able to understand be very gentle you have opened up the wire do some suction apply the busco pan relax the papilla and then gradually maneuver the wire very easy maneuver don't too much of uh, physical 
you know, uh, pushing is not required. And then once you, and you can see the bile coming. So this is how the pre-cut is done. And everybody should understand this, that if we have a guide into the pancreatic duct, it is always better to do pre-cut after that. But there are chances that you may not, uh, uh, the, uh, this can be done. Uh, what are the tips? So, as I told, suitable papilla. You should understand that all papilla are not suitable. Like the papilla which I'm talking about, patient papilla without oral protrusion. These are type 1 flat papilla. No protrusion. There is almost bile duct is going away from the duodenal wall. It is not touching the duodenal wall or there is no bulge on the duodenal wall. These patients uh, may not do well uh, or the success rate of pre-cut may be less. In fact, complications may be more. There can be perforation. There can be too much of bleeding. There can be pancreatitis. But if you have a good protrusion of the bile duct like type 2B or this is the most important. When the infundibulum is protruding, you should attempt to do pre-cut. Do not do when there is a intradiverticular papilla. So if you understand when to do, when not to do. Second, if you have impacted pep stone, you can Practice on that because these are like a sure shot success by pre-cut because the papilla is distended by impacted stone. The mucosa above is thinned out. You have clear cut demarcation of the pathway where you will cut. Well visualized intradudinal portion of the papilla. Small ducts to be avoided. So suitable papilla to be chosen, limit the wire manipulation within the fresh sphincterotomy side, as I have told you, that can cause retroduodenal perforation. Identify anatomy while cutting, as I, as I shown in my video, layer one cutting is to expose, it is not to access. So once you cut the layer one, the deeper structures are exposed and then the second step will be to cut actually the uh, biliary orifice. Frequent flushing is important. Place the pancreatic stent or wire. It guides the direction of cut and also reduces the risk of pancreatitis. So this was about pre-cut. The other difficult cannulations are especially once you find large intradiverticular papilla. You can see the papilla is almost hidden into the into the uh, diverticula, and in fact, you have to use a pediatric forceps to avert this papilla. I am pushing this papilla away, the lateral wall, to bring this papilla from inside the diverticula to outside. So you may use balloon dilatation of diverticular rim use of two device in one channel. This is 4.2 channel. So you can have a sphincterotome as well as uh, pediatric biopsy forceps. Uh, so two devices in one channel. Biopsy forceps, forceps to avert the diverticulum, saline solution injection to lift the papilla, endoscopic clipping sometimes may be required. And then you may use um, pancreatic guide wire or stent to avert the papilla. And you can see now we are using the pediatric forcep to push the papilla out and trying to see where is the opening. And once the opening is there, you try to maneuver by your body movements, by the bending of synchrotome, and ultimately you will succeed. So this is how you can do the intradiverticular papilla. Most commonly used technique is to use a pediatric biopsy forceps. But other technique like 
injection beside it so that it lifts but sometime if the injection is wrong then in fact it can be uh, detrimental and you may have to abandon the procedure for the day because you have injected in a wrong place and the uh, you were trying to lift up the papilla but in fact you buried the papilla this may also happen so that is why uh, technique like pediatric forceps is much better uh, i'll skip this so how to improve cannulation rate during endoscopic uh, retrograde cholangiopancreatography you should always do selective biliary cannulation a failed biliary cannulation by more than 5 attempts or more than 5 minutes break the circuit see if your pd wire is there if the pd wire is there put pd stent and try to do double wire technique and if it fails you do needle knife sphincterotomy uh, if it fails you may have to do us guided biliary intervention if pancreatic duct is not cannulated you can still go with needle knife sphincterotomy and then you may uh, fail also and if that is non urgent you try on another day or refer the patient to tertiary care hospital rather than trying yourself and causing more problem access to pancreatic duct again is very important as i told it is just the mirror image of the bile duct you have to go on to the 1 to 2 o'clock as compared to 11 or 12 o'clock and again there are type of pancreatic ducts and bile duct junctions these are important because majority of the cases bile duct and pancreatic duct have a common channel they do not have a long common channel if the common channel is more than 1.5 cm that is known as abnormal pancreatic or biliary ductal junction and can cause more other problems like biliary malignancies or choroidal cysts but majority of the patients have a short common channel 85% other patient may have separate opening in the papilla a pd or cbd but good thing is that even if your wire is going into the uh, bile duct again again you may still bring the wire out and turn the direction of the wire cannulation without totally coming out don't come out completely because 85% have common channel so once you come up till to the tip of the duodenal mucosa you change the trajectory of sphincterotome change the trajectory of the wire use the angulated wire which can change the trajectory by rotation and then you can achieve the pancreatic ductal cannulation so this video is not working but somehow if your bile duct is cannulated you can sometime cut the bile duct expose the bile duct and you will have a small opening at 5 o'clock position so this opening is pancreatic ductal opening so sometimes we use biliary sphincterotomy to expose the pancreatic ductal opening and if everything fails you may have to adopt to eus like this in this patient there is deep cannulation of the pancreas duct failed and you come back to the eus you can see here there is a large pancreatic duct so this is the pancreatic duct and we are imaging from the g junction and you can puncture this pancreatic duct by us guided uh, needle puncture and then pass the guide wire and you, you can see here we are puncturing this uh, pancreatic duct by the us needle get inside the pancreatic duct do a good pancreatic gram and check uh, whether your needle is into the pancreatic duct and then push the guide wire and once the guide wire is pushed you may and you can see here the needle is into the pancreatic duct and there is complete blockage of pd in the head region then you can exchange it with uh, cystotome and then burn the way through and this is the cystotome being used onto the 
guide wire into the pancreatic duct then you can exchange with the longer wire and then subsequently you can do the tract dilatation by cre balloon if required or you can place a pancreatic stent from the pancreatic gastrostomy side you can see there is a pancreatic integrate pancreatic gastrostomy done and then sometimes you are able to pass this uh, stent and then this work is done because the pancreatic duct has been drained coming to the minor papilla therapy this is also very important uh, and minor papilla are uh, usually the uh, patient who have recurrent episodes of pancreatitis and mrcp showing a pancreas divism where the pancreas is duct is seen to cross the bile duct you can see the bile duct usually the pancreatic duct will be uh, seen uh, coming right from the end of the bile duct but here we are seeing the pancreatic duct crossing the bile duct this is seen in 7% of autopsy series 7.5% on ercp finding and this may be seen in idiopathic recurrent pancreatitis and if you can broaden this a minor papilla opening by doing a sphincterotomy you may bring down the episodes of recurrent pancreatitis so how to identify minor papilla so the minor papilla is uh, minor papilla is uh, 1 to 3 cm cephalad and anterior on the right side of the major papilla how to achieve this uh, position you have to uh, you have to see this by pushing the scope you can see uh, this is not the good fluoroscopy image but ultimately you may have to do a semi long position in semi long position you will be able to bring this minor papilla in your picture so normally you will in face the major papilla you push your scope bring to the semi long position and you will be able to see a minor papilla opening which is right and cephalad to the major papilla opening and then you may have to use some of the special accessories like metal tip or you have to use very thin sphincterotome a thin guide wire like 0.18 guide wire and sometime needle knife and sometimes if nothing works you if you have access to secretin you can give iv secretin and you can have a real time secretion of pancreatic juice from this minor papilla opening uh, uh, and then you can clearly see the uh, pancreatic juice coming out of this minor papilla sometimes the minor papilla is not visualized and iv secretin may help in such situation so these are some of the techniques which we have to do and to uh, tackle these difficult bile duct stone i'll touch upon uh, the difficult bile duct stone can be large bile duct stone or there can be a stricture above the bile duct then it becomes uh, difficult a mirzi syndrome patient may have a difficult bile duct stone and patient who have intrahepatic stones so any of these uh, anatomy can make a simple stone also to be difficult bile duct stone and those stones which are more than 2 cm may require additional to endoscopic sphincterotomy to be removed especially if they are 2 cm they may require mechanical lithotripsy or 3 cm they may require other types of lithotripsy like uh, laser lithotripsy or extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy but the majority of the patients can be treated by doing uh, balloon dilatation large cbd stones can be removed by doing um, uh, papillary balloon dilatation so to do papillary balloon dilatation you have to do some sphincterotomy like half sphincter to be cut 50% of sphincter you cut by the sphincterotome then you pass the cre balloon uh, inside the bile duct majority inside only one third outside and then inflate this balloon 
and once you inflate and the correct size of balloon can be determined by the measuring the lower end of the bile duct if lower end of the bile duct is large you may use 1.5 and 2 cm also so here you can see once the uh, balloon dilatation is done you can remove large pep, large stone also so the balloon size majority of the time is 10 to 15 that depends on two thing one the diameter of the cbd and two the diameter of the stone if the stone which you want to remove is big one you may have to do big swing trot but you may not be able to do big swing trot me if the lower bile duct is narrow so you never should never attempt to do a bigger bile duct swing trot me swing trot plus t if your bile duct is narrow so always take a guide by lower cbd anatomy duration should be 60 seconds and the sphincter sphincter anatomy should be 50% and if you have a chance always put a pd stent especially if you are not doing sphincter anatomy because if you are doing the sphincteroplasty without sphincter anatomy you are inviting more pancreatitis and in such situation if there is non removal of the bile duct stone you may use laser guided lithotripsy as has been shown in this you can do a spyglass uh, cholangioscopy guided laser lithotripsy this is the laser machine which has got various settings energy and frequency which in various combination can be used to pulverize this stone and you can see here the uh, high frequency laser is being used to uh, do dusting that means almost uh, laser, these five the stones are reduced to sand particles and then these can be removed easily regarding hyalur structure i'll take another 5 minutes um, one has to do a good cross sectional imaging to understand what is to be done first of all one has to be assured that this cancer is inoperable then only you should attempt metal stenting otherwise you may have to do either pre operative biliary drainage by plastic stent or naso naso biliary tubes or place percutaneous drainages but if your tumor sub like in this example the tumor is invading main hepatic artery or portal vein is involved on the contralateral side these are inoperable tumors you should also take in account whether the lobe is atrophied or there is any abnormal anatomy and always do a good mrcp before attempting and divide the biliary system into three parts right posterior right anterior and left these all drain 30 30 30% 30%. and if you are able to do more than 50% of drainage that means at least these two large segments are drained then your palliation will be perfect so it is important for us to understand the anatomy like this this is the right anterior system this is segment 5 and 8 while the posterior which goes is to the 6 and 7 this yellow one is 30% the red one is 30% while the left is 2 3 and 4 and then they also drain 30% so one has to know whether we need to do a bilateral stenting or unilateral stenting so by mrcp you can decide whether the structure is type 1 when the right and left systems are communicating and in such situation only one stent anywhere will be enough like if you put a single metal stent it will drain everything so type 1 there is no problem while type 2 when then there is a tumor which has separated right and left hepatic duct then i will try to prefer put a stent on the right side because right anterior and right posterior both are communicating and that can drain at least 60% so one stent on the right side should be in type 2 uh, hyalur structure while type 3 a structure when there is not only right and left are separated but right anterior and posterior are separated in such situation always we should place two stent either one on left or right or one in right or right anterior and posterior 
so two stents are required when the right secondary confluence that is type 3a strictures are there while if there is a left uh, deep uh, strictures are there that means left secondary confluence like segment 4 or segment 2 and 3 all are involved then better to put one stent on the right side so that will drain 30% for the right anterior 30% by right posterior so this is how we calculate the number of stent and where to place a good road map by mrcp is important type 4 strictures are usually should be uh, managed by ptbd or should be offered if at all uh, uh, offered a drainage should be done by ptbd uh bilateral stenting i think uh, is 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 important to understand that this type of uh, anatomy should be seen you can see here there is a right anterior and posterior are separated left is separated so you may require two stents either a parallel stent or stent in stent we will discuss this uh, in our discussion part so this is an example of stent in stent where a large cell design stent is placed in the left side and through the intrasis of the stent a stent is placed on the right anterior side and mind you there is no contrast is being injected you can see the air cholangiogram has been obtained and rest of the map was done by mrcp so if you avoid contrast injection and drain adequately you will get best palliative care without causing cholangitis Uh, i think uh, we do not have time for altered surgical anatomy uh, i think i'll just quickly tell you that the altered uh, uh, surgical anatomy are like most commonly we see gj anastomosis uh, where there is a afferent loop but there is a short afferent loop so you can still use ercp scope then we have ruen y hepatico jejunostomy when there is a ru loop is deep inside so you ha always have to use a entroscope to access the bile duct you have a whipple's procedure when there is a gastro jejunostomy but also hepatic jejunostomy and pancreatic jejunostomy and you may have to use a pediatric colonoscope and while ruen y hepatic gastric bypass usually requires a long entroscope to access the papilla Uh, uh so i'll just quickly uh, leave this uh, important is to do a good uh, gj which is more commonly seen uh, uh, altered surgical anatomy and one can use the ercp scope to cannulate the afferent limb and you will come this is the normal anatomy but in gj anastomosis you will come from below upwards so you are approaching the papilla in an inverted position so your bile duct will not be at 11 o'clock it will be at 6 o'clock position so that is important to understand and uh, you can see here this is the papilla and this is not the normal we have come from the below and see that we are cannulating at 6 o'clock position and the cut is being done uh, from the papilla not to 11 but to 6 or 5 o'clock position to open up the uh, mucosa and then do the deep uh, cutting of the mucosa and expose the underlying structure like the biliary opening and then cannulating uh, into the bile duct so this, this is altered surgical anatomy i'll skip this uh, coming to the last part of my talk uh, important word about the complication uh, one has to understand that ercp is associated with pancreatitis bleeding and uh, the perforation with the during uh, ercp you may find uh, sometimes uh, your scope going into the peritoneum and this is very horrible feeling but uh, now we have many many accessories to tackle this we can close this by clips or by loop and clip method or by otsc clip method no need for um, sending these patient for surgery but keep a close watch admit the patient nil by mouth antibiotic put a naso jejunal tube feed them and if there is any ongoing peritonitis call the surgeons 
otherwise majority of the patient can be treated the bleeding uh, post sphincterotomy is also common you should have all the armamentorium in your room like quick graspers clips fully covered stents are very very important in such situation because they can cause good tamponade of the area you can see here the fully covered stent being placed and the bleed can be arrested very very quickly though there is some cost involved but uh, this type of situation can be easily tackled by uh, putting this type of start with adrenal injection do some quick grasping or put the clips uh, and ultimately i think you may have to use a fully covered stent to arrest the bleeding i think with this uh, we have covered majority of the topic related to the ercp procedures um, uh, i know it's a long lecture but i thought i'll co cover everything dr nilesh specifically asked me to cover these topics so i i uh, deliberately made it a, a longer lecture but i will be happy to answer questions if there are any uh, thank you dr ramchandani for that excellent lecture uh, i personally got answers to many of the doubts that i had and i believe uh, many of our listeners as well uh, had that experience uh, there have there are some questions that have been uh, sent in uh during stone extraction uh, when would you use a, a basket to crush the stone so uh, basket is majority of the time uh, used if there is a uh, there is a, a discord and between the lower end of the bile duct and stone size so you cannot uh, say that a 2 cm stone will require crushing or a 1.5 cm stone will require crushing if the stone is say 1 cm and lower cbd is 8 mm or 7 mm your stone will not come out so you need to crush it so you can use between and the stone size and uh, uh, sometimes the uh, the operator preference over basket and balloon i never use basket but one of my colleague use always basket because he feels that he can drag the stone better because the would to the bile duct and they they find it easy but otherwise as far as crushing is concerned uh, one has to tackle with the different basket it is not the all baskets are not mechanical lithotripter competent baskets so like trapezoid basket from boston scientific is mechanical lithotripter competent basket so you you catch the stone with the basket try to remove it and sometimes this basket can get stuck and then you can connect this crush but usually if the lower bile duct is quite wide open do a very good sphincteroplasty and you will be able to remove a majority of the stones by the balloon extracting um, catheter and uh, regarding a uh, plastic biliary stents uh, when would you use a double end pigtail one biliary okay, so that's a good question uh, yes yes so the major major problem with stent is migration so if there is a uh, tight structure say in a malignant structure there is a good you know grip of the stent so you will prefer to use a plastic stent a straight plastic stent because the there will not be a migration because the structure is so tight it will not allow the stent to go away while if you are using the stent to overcome a problem of cholangitis because the cbd stones are there and there is no firm grip of the bile duct you will use double pigtail stent so double pigtail stent is used in stone disease or a loose structures under the tight structure a straight biliary stent is placed straight biliary stent has a good pushability you can push through tight structure while double pigtail stent sometime are not pushed through tight structure 
so tight structure straight stand stone disease double pectoral stand and uh, regarding pancreatic stents uh, plastic stents uh, you said that uh, for, uh, post ercp uh, pancreatic uh, prophylaxis you use uh, the smaller stent 5 french 5 cm for chronic pancreatitis uh, how would you choose the stent uh, diameter and length okay so that also is a very important question and before answering your chronic pancreatitis question the the prophylactic pd stent which we are placing for Uh, post ercp prophylaxis should always be a single pectoral stent the straight part should be inside the bile duct its uh, flanges should be cut and the pectoral should hang into the duodenum because if you do not if you use straight stent there are chances that there can be internal migration after two weeks when patient comes back you can see the stent on x ray but there is no stent on duodenoscope because it has internally migrated and once that is internally migrated it can cause severe problem because the pancreatic duct is normal in caliber and it is very difficult to remove so if you use if you want to use prophylactic pd stent use 5 french stent 5 cm stent and single pectoral outside so that is the important regarding chronic pancreatitis if you, you your aim should be not only relieve the pain but also to relieve the stricture which is causing the pain so what we do is we first place a 10 french stent inside the pancreatic duct that also depend on how is the pancreatic duct if pancreatic duct is too dilated you can keep on increasing the number of stents say in 3 months time you bring the patient again you dilate the stricture put another parallel stent you another 3 months later you can put another stent so incremental number of stent depending on the bile duct diameter you can treat this patient for one year and if after one year remove all the stent then define whether the stricture is resolved or not if resolved keep the patient on follow up if not resolved that means your endotherapy has failed and you may ask this patient to undergo surgery so in chronic pancreatitis just mere putting stent is not important but our goal should be achieved why we are putting stent we are putting the stent to overcome the stricture but is it enough for us to just keep on exchanging the stent no we should put number of stents to dilate the stricture permanently get the stricture remodeled get the stricture resolved completely in one year time so that patient doesn't have to come again again to the hospital just for stent exchange or we have a end point after one year we'll stop we'll stop and send this patient for surgery so that this disease is resolved forever so uh, i think the other questions that we have had Uh, so on behalf of uh, sri lanka society of gastroenterology i would like to thank you for taking uh, the time out of your busy schedule to deliver this lecture uh, we all know that you are always very forthcoming when we request for help uh, from you regarding our academic activities so uh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation uh, dr ramchandrani and uh, uh, thank you thank you very much uh, i sincerely thank sri lankan society for giving me this opportunity and uh, thank you very much for your kind words dr kodi singe and uh, i i am always available and uh, i hope uh, the collaboration between indian societies and sri lankan societies for uh, uh, academic sessions will continue thank you very much thank you